Hey, photographers, welcome to the Boca Podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Holritz, and I'm here to help you build a sustainable photography business. That means improving your photo skills, building on your business knowledge, and honing your marketing abilities. But it also means helping you work more efficiently so you don't get burnt out in the long run. We do try to bring the show to you commercial free, so make sure to check out our sponsors, photographersedit.com and milu, M-I-I-L-U.com. Photographers Edit is custom photo editing for the professional photographer, and milu is the simplest way to create and manage timelines and shot lists for the events you're photographing. Again, photographersedit.com and milu.com. All right, let's get into today's episode. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're back for another Boca podcast episode today. And um, we're, we're here at this is a man, honestly, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about this conversation. And it, it's a tough conversation, but a needed conversation. Um, I'm lucky, though, that the conversation is to be had with uh, a relatively new friend of mine, George Mitchell. George, thanks so much for coming back on the Boca podcast. Nathan, how are you? And thank you for having me back on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And and just to be clear, George, uh, I'm not nervous because you're here. Um, I'm nervous <laughs> just because I want to make sure that I treat this conversation uh, with the respect that it deserves, um, that I take the right approach to the conversation. But I was saying to you before we hit the record button that you make that easy. Um, it, you know, Since the time I had the chance to meet you in person at WPPI, uh, to the last conversation that we had on the podcast back in episode mm-hmm. 378, uh, you just make it easy to have conversation, and and I just really appreciate that. So I want to say that at the outset. Well, thank you. And, and you know, these conversations don't have to be hard. They start off a little bit uncomfortable, right? But as you go along continuing to have these conversations, they do get easier, right? You can start to kind of break down those walls. So I'm happy to be back here having this conversation with you. And, you know, I'm hoping that what we're doing will encourage others to to engage and, and have similar conversations and start to tear down these walls. So. For sure. For sure. Well, I, but I, I think you're a great example, though, too, of someone, you know, and whether, I mean, it's, this is the topic at hand right now, but but in any conversation, it makes it a lot easier to approach conversation when um, one approaches it with an open mind and with kindness is kind of the, the the base level or the basis, I guess, for that conversation. And again, you you do that. I mean, you, you make it you make it easy in that regard. So I, I just want to say that at the outset. But um, for anybody who did not hear my conversation with George back in episode 378, uh, we actually released the episode back uh, the beginning of May. Um, so a little over a month ago. It's here we are about a month later. And we're dealing with the the aftermath of the death of George Floyd and all that goes along with that. And I I mean, I I can't do an introduction to the topic justice. So I I think I'm going to leave an introduction out, George, and just kind of get into, we'll just kind of jump right in. Uh, And I'd love to get your take, first of all. I mean, we're going to, this is really end up going to be, I guess it's going to be kind of a part two to our conversation about inclusion Mm -hmm. in the photography industry. But with a massively different context um, right. because of the recent events. And so to that point, I'd just love to get your take on what the last couple of weeks have been like for you personally um, after George Floyd's death. Any particularly overwhelming or consistent thoughts or feelings? Or has it been just kind of all over the place? You're still trying to process? What's it been like? Well, it's it's definitely been over all over the place. Uh, overwhelming. Um, let's just say all all of the above, Right. It's it's a lot to unpackage, and it's something that, unfortunately, I'm not uh, unfamiliar with these types of incidents. Um, we've been dealing with this for decades. Uh, so when you see it on TV, you know, it's one of those emotions to where, you know, you're starting to ask over and over again, and repeatedly, you know, when will this change? When will this end? When will... You know, when will this stop? Hmm. And it goes on and, and, and it's not being addressed by those who can make change. And it becomes a, a feeling of, of um, it, there's a hole there, right? Um, there's the, uh, the feeling that this is not going to change. It's not going to stop. And, um, we have to do, you know, what we have to do on our end to 
better protect ourselves or keep ourselves out of these situations. So you start kind of feeling that the air of loneliness in a sense, right? Because nobody's hearing the stories, nobody's hearing the cries. Uh, and that's how you feel. But this has definitely been uh, one of those incidents and instances where uh, we're now listening. We're now we're now seeing things take place. We're seeing movement. Um, and unfortunately, it took a world catastrophic event on both levels, the pandemic and the, the loss of George Floyd, uh, for people to finally sit still and, and, and see that this is happening. Um, this is our reality. Um, so it's it's just a, a, a lot to unpackage, a lot of emotions all over the place. And it's been it's been a, a very interesting two weeks. Very, very interesting. No, oh, I, well, and I can I, at the very least. I mean, I can say to that is it, it's I, mean, I can only imagine. Um, I, I don't know what it's like to be in in a position where I have to have the fears that you're, that you're describing and that we have right. seen now made live yet again on video. And I, and I saw posts, um, actually, I think it may have been Gary Vaynerchuk, but his, his may have even been a repost. Um, this is something mm-hmm. probably that has gone around the very fact that if this had not been, or what if we didn't have video and this had not been caught on video, because you think about how long, sadly, how long this had been going on where there wasn't visible accountability. Uh, where these incidences weren't caught on camera in one form or another, and accountability wasn't there. Right. right. And and now and, we go ahead. Yeah. So so to that point, you know, <laughs> even with the the introduction of camera, right, um, and capturing these these events, it was still going unaddressed. Fair. Right. Yeah. Um, and and that's that's what makes it even worse. Hmm. Um, but we. Uh, <sighs> That makes it even worse. It's caught on tape, it's visible, and you still have people who don't feel that there's an issue. And that, that makes it even worse. But um, I didn't you, mean to cut you off, you but I wanted to enter that. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I, I appreciate you. Yeah, no, I, and I appreciate you kind of adding that, that, that caveat. It's a, I say caveat, but really it's a significant point to be made. Um, I, I guess what I'm thinking is that so many of these instances have not been caught, and there isn't mm-hmm. that accountability and so many lives lost and or affected drastically that didn't get the kind of airplay that this particular instance did. And that's sad mm-hmm. to think about just at a root level. But right. then to your point, now we, this is, it's not like this is the only incident that has been caught on camera. Um, for some reason, this is beginning to take hold. And, you know, you spoke about the significance now of movement and of change. And we're going to mm-hmm. get to that here in just a second. Yeah. But I first wanted to deal with something that I'm curious about, still trying to kind of work through myself. You and I actually, I think, kind of talked a little bit about the significance of words and definitions a little bit in the last uh, podcast episode. Mm-hmm. And then previous to that, during our, our conversation in person, um, I don't want to so much get into that at the moment as I think part of my nervousness, even in this conversation, George, is, you know, as, as much as my, I know my heart is in the right place, I, I mm-hmm. want to make sure that I'm not using words or phrases that are somehow misconstrued or ultimately offensive that are off putting. And, you know, I've, I've seen various people from the white community trying to post on social media in the last week or so in support of the black lives matter movement. And in some cases, those words are criticized or that you know, it's said that, that the words are posted too late or the wrong things were said maybe, or, you know, maybe it's maybe it's suggested that it's virtue signaling. Um, in some cases, the motives of these people posting may not be all that great, but in some cases, the motives that, again, the heart of that person posting, they genuinely want to help and to support, but they don't realize that the words that they're using can mm-hmm. potentially mm-hmm. be hurtful or off-putting or maybe even hurt the movement. So right. I'd love for you just to kind of comment on words. Before we talk about action, let's talk about the words and the significance of words in light of this conversation. Yeah, and, and, and words are, you know, <laughs> words are words. I think at this time, because everyone everyone has been touched by this in a sense, right? Um, and I think at this time, what um, what people need to do, especially if you're looking to to be an ally, is to listen more so than than to to use words at this point. Is to listen, um, and then you know a bit of self reflection in your day to day. 
um, dealings, you know, and think about those past conversations. Think about where you can make change or or think about things that you could be doing to to, you know, bring awareness to some things that may be happening that that others aren't um, aware of. Sure. Um, but I think listening is going to be key for a lot of individuals right now, because, again, there's a lot to unpack. Right. And we, we see certain things in the media. We see our friends saying certain things. But, you know, some and I don't want to, you know, belittle anybody's comments or anything like that. Some of these things are surface. A lot. There's a lot of things that have happened at, that and are happening in on so many deeper levels uh, with systemic racism and, and racism across the board that, you know, we need to listen. We need to get a full understanding of what has been happening for years up until today. Uh, in 2020. Um, so yes, you, you know, I haven't seen some of those posts, so I can't directly respond to that, but you know, we have to choose our words wisely, um, and as well as our actions, right. Um, you know, I work for a corporation outside of photography and they've done an awesome job of, of, of highlighting some of the, um, stories of African Americans within the organization, uh, they've had talks. They've set up counseling services and things of that sort. Wow. Among, among a few other things that I'll get into later. But, you know, I, I had to let people know that some of these stories could be triggering, hmm. right? Um, when you ask an, a black person about their experiences and you're asking them to share, that could be triggering. And I, I get it. We have to share these stories because, you know, it's it's us giving you our story from, you know, and, and what has happened, our experience. We have to share those. But some of those stories can be triggering. And I've sat on a few calls where people have, you know, given their story and it's very triggering. I've had my own negative interactions with the police. No mm. criminal record, never been involved in, mm. you know, anything that would label me a criminal or anything like that. But I've had, you know, just driving through a town. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I've had those interactions. So when you hear these stories, it can be a bit triggering. But again, to my point, um, we we have to tell these stories, but just be mindful when you're approaching um, um, blacks uh, or people of color, African-Americans, when you're asking about that story. But do more so to educate yourself. There are a ton of movies that have been made over the years that speak to these same institutions and these same wrongdoings. These there are movies that have that have been out there for you know for years, right? Educate yourself by watching some of those. There are tons of books on on the matter. Um, educate yourself, then ask questions. Then you know as you becoming the ally, you know then you're educated, better well educated to speak and to respond. Um, and again, you know so, some of us, well, some are new to this. Right. So, again, it'll be more so about the listening before you respond. What would you say? And, and when we when we talk about the significance of listening, you know, one of the the phrases that we saw pop up in the last week or two is silence is violence. And I, I understand where that's coming from in, in the, the larger context. Mm-hmm. But but then I, I know that people were being called out for not speaking up in response, uh, in not posting to social media, essentially. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where is the balance between those two things, because my my tendency um, would be more on the silent side, not obviously because I don't have a heart for the black community, not because I don't want to end this ridiculous concept called racism that still exists in 2020, mm-hmm. but but because I want to make sure that I'm not saying, you know, to, to my earlier point, saying the wrong thing, right. um, because I want my actions to, in, in, in many cases, to speak louder than my words, but I, I, I also don't want to just simply be silent. So where is the balance in there? Right. And, you know, that's interesting that you ask because I have uh, 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 photographer friends in key positions or in positions. I don't want to say key positions, but in positions. Um, and they've been contacted by their white counterparts. And, and it's, it's OK to ask. Right. You know, um, what is it that we can be doing? You know, what is it that we should be doing? That's perfectly fine. You know, and I know we spoke to just a moment ago about, you know, the triggering aspect, but there's nothing wrong with asking questions. I don't want people to take that away from my comments, but just be mindful in their approach. Right. That was the takeaway there. But there's nothing wrong with asking what we can be doing or 
how can we get better? How what what should we be doing to, to get better? So yeah, to to the point of of posting on social media and taking a stance, that's great. But what we need right now is actionable actionable change. We need you know concrete things put in place to to push forward for change. I was uh, out online looking at things recently, and I came across. Uh, two statements, diversity memorandums of understandings, okay. where you know these large corporations and, and certain groups uh, have uh, white organizations have developed these memorandums of understandings, and you can look them up online. Um, but basically, there are actionable items that their organizations are planning to take mm. over the next few years to uh, help you know uh, help right the wrongs. Right. Um, and it, it covers everything. I mean, you know, I've seen things in these memorandums from, of course, you know, donating to, you know, the NAACP or the National Urban League and a few other organizations that support minority causes. But, you know, real things for, for real change, such as, you know, exploratory committees, diversity committees uh, that wouldn't just include the internal agents, but community as well. Right to investigate or to help become better uh, uh, citizens for change, right? As a corporation or corporate citizens for change, you know those are those are the things that we need. We need those actionable items. We need people to put things in place so that we don't go back after the protests have stopped, uh, after the media has turned the attention to something else, right? Uh, we need to have these things in place so that we don't go back. Because I'll, I'll be honest with you, there are a few corporations that I like, support, and or follow. And not just, you know, from a social media standpoint, but, you know, I, I actually buy from them. They're on notice, <laughs> right? Hmm. I can't continuously spend my money with you if you're not going to make a statement or if you're making an empty statement. Um, because words are words, right? Uh, I need to see actions. I, I want to see that you are truly uh, in the fight. You're looking for change. You're looking to better us as a society. And we need to see those things. We need those things to be documented. And we need people to to engage and to follow through on what we're stating and what we're using our words to say that we support. Well, it, I mean, I think that's a really great segue to my next question, which has to do with the beginning of action, right? How can we, what can we do? And honestly, that that's, that's one of the things that's kind of rung through my mind in the last week or two is the significance of, of doing, because it seems so convenient in the moment to post mm -hmm. something to social mm -hmm. media because everybody yes. is doing it. And like you said, because the media is bringing it up, but then what? Um, right. and, and so to start that conversation, I'm curious, and this is just on a, like a very basic level outside the photography industry, just day to day life, because I've, I've even thought about this as I've gone to the gym, like the last couple of days, again, my heart and, and George, you, you barely know me, but you know me a little bit at this point, and, right. and hopefully you've experienced a little bit of this in person. I just love connecting with people. Right. So yeah. my, yeah, sure. my tendency just by default in this situation, um, outside of the, you know, being scared about saying the wrong thing is let me. I mean, come up and have a comp like if, if I'm to see somebody um, of color at the gym, for example, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and you know, right now it's and it's kind of interesting to observe, but there haven't been as many black people at the mm -hmm. gym in the last few days when I've been there, and and so naturally, if somebody's there, they're standing out a little bit more, and and in that case, my natural tendency would be want to go up and have a conversation with them and, and just say something <laughs> as simple as "Look, I've got your back," you know. And right, they don't know right, me from right. anybody, so it probably come off really, really weird. Um, but right. I say all that to just kind of set the stage for my question, which is on a just on a basic day to day basis, especially as intense as things are right now. Me as a white dude, um, or any white women listening in, what what can we do on just a really basic, practical level, not just to post on social media, but to actually show visible, tangible support in person to a person of color? Well, you know, we're not aliens. We're not unapproachable, right? Um, and and I'm sure in a lot of our daily interactions, we do come in contact with, uh, with Blacks or people of color. And, you know, conversations start from a simple hello, hmm. right? 
And as we discussed in the podcast previous, you know, it's about getting to know one another. But, you know, and I don't want to use the word fast track, but there are a ton of things that that happen on a day to day basis in in every given city. So I'll give you Michigan, uh, you know, the Detroit metro area, for example. There are a ton of, of different events uh, that are that are taking place. There are a ton of uh, of African American organizations that are doing things. There are people in the community doing things all of the time. And again, it would be one of those situations to where you can find those events. You can mm, find those okay. individuals, and you can you can go to those events. Those events are not private and or closed. Okay. They're open to everyone. Yeah, and you can go to those events. You can learn more. Right. You can listen. And that's how you start engaging. I mean, that's just one way. There are tons of ways uh, to engage with 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 people from different walks of life, right? Uh, like you said, you know, you could just start up a random conversation to only find out that you have so many things in common hmm. with this complete stranger. Um, so but, yeah, do but maybe that. rather than making it really awkward and just going up to somebody exactly. random at the gym, <laughs> you could find <laughs> because I, I I know that's weird, and that's why my 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 question, and it's kind of it's a little bit tongue in cheek, but. Um, right. but, but again, that's my, that's my tendency is right now, knowing the sensitivity of, of the situation going on. I, I mean, I, I, I just am crazy about people in general and not just because there's a headline out there right. and it doesn't matter right. the, the color of their skin. And, and, and yet like right now, because this is going on, I especially want to show support for the black community. And, and so Obviously, it's going to come off weird to go up somebody in the gym, maybe totally randomly or in Walmart or you know wherever it may be. Uh, but that's just that's what's inside of me. And yet I know right. there's, there's probably a better way to approach it. I really love just the simple practicality of what you were suggesting, which is look for events in yeah. the community. Yeah, look for organizations. I mean, you know, again, I mean, you have the NAACPs, you have the the uh, the the local urban league chapters right uh, or the ne- uh, the local NAACP chapters that you can show your support by visiting their meetings and things of that sort. Um, there are even local Black Lives Matter chapters. Mm. Uh, I know Ypsilanti, I believe uh, Ypsilanti, Michigan has one, which you know I'm originally from Inkster, which is uh, a, a small town in, in Michigan, not too far from Ypsilanti. But my point is, is that there are tons of events that you know people can get involved and get engaged with. It's not just for black people. There are a ton of events that are open to everybody. They want to include everybody okay. because, of course, again, that's the best way to to share those stories, to get to know one another, yeah. to be educated on on things that are happening. I'll, I'll give you another instance. The National Urban League uh, and, and the NAACP, they participated if, if, um, in annual studies mm-hmm. on the black community, right, that you can read. They're available online. There, Again, there are a ton of ways that you can engage, that you can learn more, that you can listen, that you can be an ally. You just have to go out there and find it, even on a photography level, right? Uh, there's a, a store back in Michigan that I would often frequent. Owner is uh, of Jordanian descent. Okay. Um, you know, nice guy, but he has a ton of of diverse speakers that will come in. You know, he's participated in, in a lot of different things. He's held things at the store. It's a it's a perfect melting pot, hmm. right, for people of all walks of life to be together. Um, and those are other great places to to see who's doing what. Um, and for you to take notice of, of you know, who's doing what, right? Because uh, there's still the conversation of, well, we can't find these black photographers. Well, they're out there. You're just not going to the right places to find them. Interesting. Right? So, yeah, there are, again, to, to, to answer the question, yes, you know, there are a ton of events, a ton of organizations uh, that may be minority run and or led that, you know, anyone is uh, available to go to mm. and to show support by, you know, just stopping in, becoming a member, saying hello. Visiting yeah. certain events, you yeah. know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's out there. Well, and, and I, again, I love the simple practicality of that. And I'm certainly going to commit to do just that. I mean, I, I think in, in my kind of my naivety, I guess, ultimately of like, well, okay, what, what, what can I do and, and actually do right on, on, mm-hmm. on a practical mm-hmm. level. And I, of course I love the opportunity to connect with people in person. I think this is right. awesome. Right. And, and, and I want to encourage all of our listeners to to take George's suggestions here too, and and begin to look into local organizations that you can also go visit because what a cool opportunity and especially in light of all that's going on, 
to encourage connection, to encourage conversation, and ultimately to encourage education, the opportunity, right. like you were saying, to, to listen, George. Exactly. Exactly. Well, let, let's just take it one step further. Um, sure. And, and, you know, it, and first of all, I have to, to go ahead and just add this um, caveat, if you will. I mean, I, I know this is a very kind of relatively simplistic and short conversation in light of, as you pointed out, the complexity of, of all that is represented here. Mm-hmm. Um, at the very least, I, I just want to continue to encourage uh, awareness. And I just I can't thank you enough for making time to kind of share with all of our listeners. But one of the things that that um, we did on the last podcast episode in 378, and we'll put that in the show notes for anybody who did not get to hear that episode, um, is you'd made some suggestions at that point, George, uh, about how we can continue to or really begin to encourage inclusion in the photography mm-hmm. industry. And you gave some some practical, three practical suggestions there. Um, it, again, for anybody who's not listened to that episode, go back and listen to that because you also have the opportunity to get to know George. I didn't have the chance to introduce him today. We just jumped right into conversation. Um, <laughs> and you can hear more about his business. And and George, I actually have your, your website pulled up here in front of me again. And yeah. that stunning, stunning shot that I pointed out earlier in the last episode of those two <laughs> drinks that make me just literally want to sit down and have a drink right now. Um, <laughs> it's incredible. George's work is beautiful. So for uh, for anybody who's Thank not you. seen his work yet, make sure you go check check out and we'll put his Instagram in the show notes too. It's G Mitchell Photo, just like it sounds uh, on Instagram. Make sure you go check it out. But all that to say, I we have we don't have a different context, and and that the issue is suddenly different. The issue already mm-hmm. existed. The issue has been brought to further light, if you will. And mm-hmm. in light of that context, I'm wondering if you have uh, slightly different suggestions for white photographers in particular, who would like to tangibly show support for the POC community in our industry, how can, how can we begin to do that? Well, I probably have a lot, lot more than three. And, and <laughs> but, we have time for that, by the way. So, so please don't, <laughs> don't hesitate. But here's the, here's going to, again, actionable change, right? You know, taking that moment to reflect on your day-to-day uh, dealings. Um, is your organization diverse? Whether it's in photography, whether it's in um, corporate America, whatever it is, is your organization, is it, is it diverse? Are your surroundings diverse? Um, and then let's take it a step further. If, if, if there is diversity there, because that word is, is thrown around a lot, you know, what is the, what is the, is there equity there? Hmm. Is there, is there true inclusion, right? Hmm. Because one of the things that we also see, you know, we don't see representation at a high level in these organizations. You know, maybe they're a handful of black directors or senior managers, maybe uh, a channel vice president, not necessarily a senior vice president. But, you know, there are a ton of, of uh, uh, black CEOs and, and C-suite executives, but we're not well represented um, in those tiers across um, across industries. Interesting. Right? Okay. Yeah. The bottom line is, we need white people now to be allies. We've tried for years to to you know fix this thing, right? So now we need now more than ever we need white people to step up and say, "Hey, wait a minute! Our organization is not as diverse. The equity is not there." Hmm. And we're not being as, as inclusive as we could be. You know, I was reading an article recently that talked about some of these things, right? So where, where are you recruiting? You know, are you recruiting at um, places like HBCUs or, you know, schools in the inner city? You know, wh- where are you doing your recruitment? Where are you doing your procurement? You know, what is your, uh, your contractor levels look like? Um, are you, do you hire a diverse group of contractors? Hmm. You know, what percentage of those contractors are actually black, you know? So if you're a white person and you're in these, you know, maybe key positions or in a position where you can, uh, you know, provide or, or throw out the question to get some, some insight or a better understanding, that's where you can start making change. That's one of the areas where okay. you can start making change is kind of shaking up the status quo, right? Yep. You know, you go into these offices and just put the shoe on the other foot. You know, I don't have a problem being around people that don't look like me, but after a while, you kind of start to wonder, like, why am I the only African-American here? 
Hmm. Right. You know, and I've had a lot of <laughs> a lot of instances where I am the only black person in the room often. Um, and it, it, it starts to it, it sinks you a little bit because you start wondering, well, why am I here? Or you start wondering, well, you know, is there not enough talent? But then you think about it, like, no, I know talent, but why isn't it represented here? Hmm. So that's that's the key thing is to is for the allyship to take place and to start to shake up the status quo. Okay. Right. The other thing is to get things not necessarily rolling or get people to address them, but to make actionable steps for change documenting things, making them cement, putting them in agreements into your charter, whatever the case may be. Um, but that would be the second thing, you know, and, and one of the more important things is that we need cemented, actionable change going forward. Again, we don't need to be in a situation to where we look up, you know, next year uh, and we're back to doing the same things or dealing with the same situations. So actionable change would definitely be one of those things that could that could be done, uh, whether it be your friend group, whether it be your office, whether it be your studio, whether it be an organization you belong to outside of work, uh, whether it be a professional development organization. Shake up the status quo. Ask the questions. You know, look at those different tiers of things that are that are uh, in place and, and ask, you know, what are we doing to attract talent from these diverse groups into these areas? And those are the things that I think, you know, and, and of course, getting involved, right? Like we spoke to earlier, yeah, yeah. finding those organizations, those, um, those Facebook groups, those, uh, you know, those things outside of what you would normally do to, to actually engage and be involved. Uh, and then of course, listen, you know, those are, hmm. those are all things um, that can be done at the moment um, to help change and make actionable steps towards, you know, a, a better community. Well, and, and, you know, when you were talking about actionable, and these are all interesting and, and, and very good points, I'm thinking about actionable steps because you were talking about, you know, the company charter, for example. And, and I think that makes a little bit more sense in the context of the corporate side of things. When we're talking about mm-hmm. sole proprietors and photographers and, and more specifically mm-hmm. portrait and wedding photographers, for example, um, like mm-hmm. probably are the majority of our listenership at the Boca podcast. So just something as simple as beginning to proactively diversify your portfolio um, right. for the sake of representation, that could be a, a, a relatively simple first step, right? That is a, that's, that's a very simple, you know, so you have to kind of look at what you're doing because sometimes you're sending messages that you may not intentionally intend to send. Right. 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 Um, so if my portfolio is, is all black, you know, someone that may be re- someone who really loves my work may say, well, I just don't know if he photographs white people. Okay. Um, so that may be a turnoff. So yeah, diversifying your portfolio, but diversifying, you know, I, I did, uh, wedding photography for a long time before I moved over to food and beverage. Hmm. Um, and uh, one of the individuals that I, I shot with most was, was a white woman and we shared weddings. We, you know, we, <laughs> we, you know, pawned weddings off to one another when we were out, you know, if, if no one else was available, we would share those weddings and we would do weddings together. Hmm. Um, and it put us in a very diverse situation to where, both our portfolios ended up being very, very diverse. Um, I love that. But uh, again, you know, that's that's one of those things that you can do with, you know, as a sole proprietor, you can kind of, you know, start working with people outside of the norm. Um, you know, we still hire assistants, right? So are you hiring assistants that may bring a different, you know, style, technique, perspective, whatever, you know, uh, are, are we doing that or are we just hiring the same people over and over again? And again, it goes back to our previous conversation about diversifying our friend circle. Yeah. You know, so th- th- another good point and it's something simple that can be done. And uh, let me ask you this. And, and again, under that, that, um, uh, that thought process of just making sure that we're approaching the conversation the right way. If a, a white photographer who has a white portfolio wants to be, create a more inclusive portfolio, is it, is it going to sound crazy for that person to go to a person of color and say, Hey, look, I'm, I want to do a better job of having a more diverse portfolio. 
would you be open to me giving you a free portrait session or something to that effect? Would that come off poorly or what are your thoughts about how to approach that? <laughs> yeah, something to that effect. And, I, and to be honest, um, a few years ago, I was in a workshop course uh -huh. and someone uh, in the class had that same issue. She had never photographed an African-American and, you know, she didn't have any African-American friends. Mm. And she asked the instructor what she could do to, to diversify her portfolio and to learn to photograph African-American skin. And he had no idea how to respond. And he looked at me and another African-American person in the room and, you know, it was just like, you know, why are you looking at us? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, again, but again, we get it. So we, we really had to, you know, so to answer your question, there is a way of doing things, right? And to not be offensive or to come off weird or, right. you know, and sometimes it's a, it's a, it's an introduction, letting people know who you are and just being honest and saying, hey, you know, listen, I am looking to uh, diversify the portfolio, like you said, and, and I'm looking to have individuals who I may be able to feature into my portfolio and then have the discussion if that person is interested. Um, you know, so, yeah, there are steps to doing that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, my cousin, she was a, a fashion model for a number of years. Okay. And there were several white photographers because uh, she's a, she's a dark complected woman. So there were several photographers that, who actually reached out to her and explained what they were were looking to do. Hmm. And they, you know, bring her in, whether it was paid or if she had a relationship with that photographer to, you know, just to, to assist in that, in that uh, instance. So yes, there's a way of doing it, but yes, that can be done. It, it, again, just try your best not to come off weird. That's all you can really do. <laughs> well, you know, and that's, that's, I think that's seriously still my biggest fear. You, you, you were saying earlier, you know, we're not aliens and that's the last thing right. I would think. I just want to right. make no. sure that I'm approaching yeah. the conversation in a way that's ultimately yeah. respectful and, and that, that my heart is seen, you know, that that's, that's right. the thing I struggle with the right. most. And, and, and so much of this, at least for me, myself personally, is just mm -hmm. make sure that, that my, my motives and my heart are seen for what they are. I may, I may be a stupid white kid. I may be a little bit ignorant no. this way or that way, but, but ultimately I, 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 I care for people. And in this case specifically, I want to make sure that my support and love is shown for the black community. And, and so, you know, the question is how to best approach these conversations and these actions ultimately in a way that it's sensitive um, and that is open-minded and, and do so in a way that's not certainly not offensive, but, but even just, you know, that might rub somebody the wrong way. I just want to make sure that, right. that we're all taking the right approach. So I, I really appreciate exactly. your insight. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And and I have to say again, like your your kindness is just wonderfully gracious, I, and and it just makes well, it so easy to to have a conversation. And I'll acknowledge again the fact that this is a a, a seriously short conversation in light of the complexity of what we're talking about. But I I, I really appreciate you allowing us to come back to this, and and I hope we can continue yeah. the conversation. Um, just as we close, will you remind all of our listeners one more time where they can follow you online? And uh, learn more about not only what you're doing to support this movement as well, but also what you're doing in the photography world. Because my word, you're you're I, it's it's amazing. Your your work is just gorgeous. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So if you guys want to check me out, uh, you can follow me at gmitchellphoto.com. Uh, that's where my website is, of course. And from there, you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at gmitchellphoto. Awesome. Well, we're going to put all of that in the show notes at bocapodcast.com. For everybody listening in, make sure you take advantage of the show notes. It's something that Haley puts together for each episode that we do, resources, talking points, and links and so forth. Make sure you check that out. We'll put all of this in the show notes. Thanks once again, George. This has been really, really helpful. Hey, thanks for having me back, Nathan. I appreciate it. And hey, Haley, hope you're well. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Haley. Right. Thanks so much, photographers, for listening to the Boca Podcast. Will you let us know what you thought of the show by leaving a review of the podcast in the Apple Podcast app? And I'd love to hear from you personally with your thoughts about the podcast and suggestions about future topics and guests for the show. My email is Nathan at bocapodcast.com. We do try to bring this show to you commercial free, so make sure to check out our sponsors, photographersedit.com and milu, M-I-I-L-U.com. Photographer's Edit is custom photo editing for the professional photographer, and Milu is the simplest way to create and manage timelines and shot lists for the events you're photographing.